my guest tonight as the New York Times bestselling author of books like Astrophysics for People in a Hurry and Starry Messenger. Please welcome back to The Late Show America's favorite astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Times best-selling author of the book Starry Messenger, right there, now available in paperback. And we'll get to this in yeah, just a moment sure, here. Thank you. But let's push some paper first. Okay. So you're not just a, a beloved astrophysicist and 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 a best-selling author. Uh, you're also a movie buff. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. We yeah. ran. We uh, we were at the same U.S. premiere of Dune Two. Yes. Last week or yes. a week and a half ago, something yes, like we that. Were. What, what did you think, Neil Tyson? It's quite the spectacle. Oh, it my is. gosh. I would say, I would say, it's perfect. What do you think, Neil? <laughs> there are no errors. Go no, on, Neil. I have Neil. some issues. You don't generally criticize science no, fiction films, do you? No, it's a couple films, of issues. You? So I don't, if people know, this movie takes place in sand dunes, yeah. and there's a worm that's very Here's hungry. An example. They're, these are an example of these big worms that yeah, come yeah. plowing They're very across hungry, the desert. Yeah. And they just plow through the sand. Yeah. And, yes. and, and they'll find you if you make a sound that repeats. Right. So they, to call one of them, you put up one of these things called a thumper. A thumper. Thump, right. Thump, right. Thump, so it you put that in the sand, and, the sand, it yeah. like, and then it finds yeah. it, and whatever's there is going to eat it. Right. But comes out fast. Somebody too. didn't do the research on that. Be because because that's not how these sandworms actually <laughs> behave. Is that what you're saying, you Neil Tyson? I'm just saying, you can't thump sand. Yes, you can. Have you, you ever tried? heard? The, have you ever heard the phrase "go pound sand"? <laughs> if you do this to sand, nobody else is going to hear it because it's sand, right? If, you if can't it, hear it, but a sandworm can. They hear things differently than we do, Neil Tyson. I, I just, it's sand. If you wanted to insulate yourself acoustically from a surroundings. Fill the volume with sand. No one will hear you. So it's, it's, it's I gotta let it go because there's no movie without it. But I got one other thing. One other thing. Well, you got another there's thing? There's a point where. You got where, another thing? Where the, where the people. Don't hold my hand the, while you the, criticize a perfect movie. No, How dare you? That is no, unwelcome, Kai. No. How dare you, sir? <laughs> so, no, the, 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 the sand people. The Fremens, the Fremen, the, yeah. Fremen the, 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 the indigenous sand people. Exactly. One of their rites of passage is like they have to ride the back of the worm. Yeah. Okay. But it's a worm. Yeah. And so they have the worm just going straight fast. Yeah. No, that's like not how worm. physics works. That's how works. sandworms work. No, no. But but have you ever seen a snake chase you as a straight snake? No. <laughs> no. They they've got a curl, and they push off the curl. But they have That's what the curling foot. is. Perhaps they have, it has scales, flexible scales, or perhaps on the belly of the worm. You think it's got little things or, like that? Or perhaps there's some sort of reverse peristaltic thing where there's sort of a wave-like action that's happening down there where we can't see it. Or they're pooping really fast to send them forward. Okay. I'm just saying we don't know all the but, science isn't in on sandworms, <laughs> Neil. Why are you jumping to conclusions? But it was cool, and they had the little, um, odd, odd, what do you call it, the, the copters, the... The ornithopters. Yeah, but they're, they're like they're like dragonflies. They look like dragonflies. Yeah, they're like yeah, dragonflies. Yeah, yeah. Very. They, they're so well done that I had to remind myself that they're not real. <laughs> no, they're very well done. Yes, but they had other huge objects defying gravity. So why did these have to have wings? Just <laughs> put that stuff in their copter, and they don't need wings at all. Probably the energy source required for the large things could carry a large energy source on board, whereas the copters have to go with a small fuel cell and cannot actually expand the energy necessary for the anti-grav uh, propulsion. Checkmate. So, so you're, you're all in on that one, on the Dune thing. I'm a thousand percent <laughs> in. Yeah. OK. Can, can, you, can you still enjoy a movie with the scientific inaccuracies in it? Here's, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Mark Twain's edict. First get your facts straight, then distort them at your leisure. Oh, sure. Because if, you, if you're ignoring basic, fundamental scientific principles, 
on the premise that that's too constraining, I need my freedoms, excuse me, the universe is not only weirder than we have imagined, it may be weirder than we can ever imagine. It's my people that brought you wormholes and, 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 and antimatter and black holes and, and the multiverse. All of that comes out of my people. And so you're gonna Sorry, talk. the multiverse was coined by the fantasy writer Michael Moorcock. Just wanted you to know. He coined it. An artist, not a scientist, coined what the term multiverse. Uh, early 60s. That feels kind of late for my people. <laughs> but, but we'll send out the... All right, we will. <laughs> okay, you want to hear things weirder in the universe than you could possibly imagine? Yeah. Here's you in an outfit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've made some cameos in movies over the years. You made one recently. This is it right here. How did you end up, am I reading this right, in the new J-Lo movie, This Is Me Now, <laughs> a love story? And what the hell are you doing in this outfit? <laughs> no. That's no. Fine. So, yeah. so, yeah. so I got a call, and they said, would I play Taurus? In the J -Lo's, astrological sign the Taurus. Astrologic. Well, it's a constellation, but in that movie, <laughs> it's an astrological sign. Okay. And sure. I said, "Show me the script." And I looked at the script, and I said, "I can make some adjustments to get a little bit of science into right. this." Right. Because you're America's most famous astrologer, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying I have a I have a very low bar when it comes to artists seeking my my. Advice, wisdom, participation. Yes. All I'm saying is if I'm not in the movie, then there's no science in the movie. So do you actually put some science into yes. astrology? No, no, I tried to I tried to help that out a little bit. Yeah. By did well, you, I, I does, you, does your character say this is all bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was a scene that they that didn't make it into the final cut. Oh. Where I made it clear that the Zodiac has 13 constellations, not 12. What? What? Yes. What? One of them is called... Are we o breaking news right now? No, What's what? going on? One of them is called Ophiuchus. And in Scorpio, if you think you're a Scorpio, you're probably an Ophiuchan because the sun spends more time in Ophiuchus than it does in Scorpio. And by the way, since 2,000 years ago when that got laid out, all the constellations have shifted by a month what? because Earth is precessing on its axis and it changes the correspondence so that most Scorpios are actually Ophiuchans and all Ophiuchans and Scorpions are currently Librans. Wow. <laughs> that, that is science Deal right with there. It. Deal with it. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go away. We'll be right back with more Neil deGrasse Tyson, everybody. <laughs>